and turn your Bible to the book of Exodus, chapter 16. I want to read like the first four or five verses. And uh, hopefully speak from there. About the manna of God. Exodus chapter 16 verse 1 says, And they took their journey from Elam, all, and all the congregation of the children of Excuse me. And all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is in between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. That will be a common reoccurring theme. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And I'm going to stop right there. Walter mentioned the manna last week and got me thinking about it. And then I went home and I was reading on a, a PDF book and there was a thing on the manna. And I thought, I like this stuff. I do. I mean, I know, I know the reality is better than the type. And the type is never the same as the reality. And Christ is the reality of the bread from heaven. But it fascinates me and it really it pleases me to know in that this book, thousands of years old, predicted, prophesied Christ's life, his work, and the results of his work. It still, it, it, it also pleases me that I can pick up a book from a guy who wrote 250 years ago and I can read a sermon he preached in 1756 and I can say amen. It's hard to do that with preachers work today. It's rare. Extremely rare. But the truth has been preached down through the ages because of our Lord Jesus Christ. It has been preserved. And it is a blessing to us that we have all this. <clears throat> so I want to start off saying basically this. Manna was a reality for the children of Israel in the wilderness. It's actually happened. You believe that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I also believe that their clothes didn't wax old or wear out while they were wandering around for 40 years. Their shoes didn't wear out. Because I've got a God. I know a God. He's revealed himself to me. They can do far greater things than that. The amazing thing here, part of it is, if you go back one chapter, you'll see verse 1 of 15, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God. You go a chapter and they're murmuring. That fast. It says they've been there two months. But that fast, the depravity of man 
will always be with us. It's no different. If this was just a religious book, it would have been all the people say amen and then gone on, and on into glory. And everything been happy and whole. No, we get the truth of man's behavior <laughs> toward God and toward each other in this book. Because man is a creature of circumstance. And I hate to admit it, but it's true of me. <laughs> If my circumstances are bad, I'm grouchy at best. Now, I try not to forswear God or curse ab about that, but anything I'm complaining about, I'm complaining about his providence toward me. And I'm ashamed. Unfortunately, I'm also flesh, and I'm not ashamed enough to stop. But here it is, the congregation singing that God is our salvation. And a month or two later, they're saying, you brought us out. It would have been better if we had died in Egypt. But the Lord had made provision for this. I like the type of Christ in the Old Testament. It reveals the intricacies and the designs and the promises and the purpose and the plan of God from the foundation of the world. And this type here, Christ tells us later in John, and hopefully we'll get to that. This is a type of Christ. He said, I am the bread from heaven. Your fathers did eat men in the wilderness and are dead. But right here, right now, this manna came down to the whole congregation of Israel, to the people. That's who the Lord promised it. Manna was promised and manna was provided. The Lord spoke to Moses and told him that bread from heaven was coming. I am going to rain bread upon you. I am going to rain bread upon you. And it's going to rain bread for you and the people. That was the plan because that was his purpose. And because it was his plan and his purpose, he provided it. There should have been no surprise. But guess what? There was. It's kind of funny if you... Uh, let's see, where is it? Verse 15 of Exodus 16. This is, well, verse 14. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, It is manna. For they wist not what it is, what it was. And Moses said unto him, This is the bread. Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Now I looked through some of the things about the word manna. The actual Hebrew translation given by people of the word manna means, What is it? That's what it means. I mean, what is it? <coughs> This manna that was promised and this manna that was provided when it came, they didn't recognize it. They didn't know what they had. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> he came unto his own, his own received him not. And the princes of this world crucified him. Why? Because they didn't know who he was. But that's all right. The Lord provided that too. Moses said, this is what I told you. This is what the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Manna was new to the Israelites. And it was a mystery to them when it came. They didn't know what it was. They didn't recognize the bread from heaven. And they, they named it, what is it? 
I don't know, but we're going to go out in the morning and get some what is it. Manna had shown up. The bread from heaven had rained down from heaven. Just as the Lord said. And then Moses had to tell them what it was. It was entirely new to the people, even though the Lord said it was coming. There should have been no surprise when Jesus Christ came into this world, but there was. The wise men showed up. They came from the east. The wise men showed up and asked, Herod, where is he that's born king of the Jews? And they said, what? What is this? Herod didn't know. The Jews didn't know. But it had been revealed to some. When he walked on this earth, when he talked on this earth, when he told them plainly who he was, they still didn't understand. Because some can't hear, can't see, and can't understand. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. He that hath eyes to see, let him see. He that has a heart to understand is rare. Only those given to him by the Father heard and saw and understood. He taught that. Because until Christ is revealed, the question always is, who is this? And when you tell people about the Christ of this Bible... Today, in this day, where we've got thousands of years of history of this Christ actually being preached, but it's not being preached now by the vast majority, they'll look at you and say, I never heard that before. They'll look at you like, told Walter he's, he belonged to a cult. Y'all coming up with that new doctrine or something. No, it's the old doctrine. It's in this Bible. From the beginning to the end, God has always made a difference in his people. And God has always saved every single one of his people. I thought about it last week, Walter, when you talked about that cloud that came down in between the people of Israel and Pharaoh's men that were chasing them. God always puts a division. God always puts a division between his people and the people of the world. It's always been that way. The next thing is manna was prepared in heaven and it came to earth. Manna came down from heaven overnight. It came down as manna. It came down in its complete form, manna. We know where it came from because God told Moses, I'm going to rain bread on you from heaven. It came from heaven. We knew who it was for because God told Moses, it's for you. And the people are to gather it. It came fully formed. Even if they didn't recognize it, even if they don't recognize it, Christ is fully formed. Christ is the food for the people of God. It was fully formed before it got here, it's fully formed when it got here. Manna was prepared before it got here, and it came to the earth to the people. They couldn't go and get it. It came to them. The manna came to them. The manna had to come to them or they wouldn't have it. Christ was the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. But Christ had to come into this world. 
the word who was with God and the word who was God that word became flesh and dwelt among us and had to become the lamb slain in reality but he had to come to this earth in order for that to be done the manna came down from heaven to the earth and the other part another part is manna was a gift God said I'm going to send it and God sent it God said the bread from heaven is going to rain down now I don't care what anybody says and I don't care what anybody does I don't really believe in Indian rain dances or anybody else's for that matter. I know we're better at predicting the weather now than we ever have been before, but that's mostly because of radar and jet stream things. And I'll sit there and watch the Weather Channel. Why? Because so that way I'm not watching the news. And it is. It's wonderful. But I'm going to tell you something. Nobody I know can make it rain. God makes the rain. And he said this bread is going to rain on you from heaven. It was a gift from God to the congregation of Israel. To the people. They didn't have to pray for it. They did not have to request it. They didn't have to look for it. They went outside and it was there. What you had to do was get up in the morning and open your eyes. And the manna was there. Manna cost the congregation of Israel absolutely nothing. They didn't, it didn't come down and they didn't have to tend it. They didn't have to plow. They didn't have to water. They just went out and it was there. You didn't have to look for it. It was everywhere among the people of God. Manna was free to Moses and the people. They didn't have to work for it. They didn't have to earn it. It came overnight and it came every night. All the people had to do, like I said, is wake up. And the manna was already there. A free gift. I'm reminded of the parable that Christ taught when he said about the prodigal son. When I came to myself. I said, my father's got stuff. My father's got food. My father had, when, I, when he came to himself, he knew. The problem is. Most people never come to themselves. And that being a parable, it takes the power of God to get you to come to yourself. My dad used to ask me every now and then, when are you going to come to your senses? I think he died asking that question. Because some days, I don't get it, but this I do know. That my father provides food for his children. My physical father did that. My spiritual father's going to do no less. Matter of fact, he's going to do much more. He has done much more. Romans 5 and 15 says, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if but through the offense of one, many be dead, much more by the grace of God and by the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Everything the people of God have that is of any value.
true value comes from and is the gift of God. Everything. Every good and perfect gift cometh down from above from the Father of lights. Everything. Manna was a gift freely and it fed. Manna fed the people of God. And it was provided for, and it was provided to the hungry. The manna was for Moses, and it was for all of the people. It didn't discriminate. Old or young, male or female, rich or poor, leaders and followers. It was for Moses and the people. There's no difference in me or Walter and you. We all need the same spiritual food. And we all need Christ. Moses had to eat the same as the people. No difference. And guess what? When Moses woke up and went outside, there was manna outside. When Aaron, picture the high priest, got up. Any of them, all of them, young, old, it didn't matter. They were to go out and gather. And it says, And the children of Israel did so, and they gathered some more and some less. And then they meted it out. They got together. They meted it out with an omer. Now, how much is an omer? I don't know. I read a little bit on that and I got confused. Okay, maybe I'll do it some more. Somebody says it's like a seventh of or a seventh of a gallon. I don't know. It's a it's some form of a bushel. Okay. There's all kind of you know, yeah. There's all kind of guessing going on. Let's just put it that way. And some of it is very well-educated guessing. But I don't know how much an omer was. But I know that's what God allotted for each individual. And some gathered more and some gathered less. And they meted out with an omer. He that had gathered much had nothing over. And he that had gathered less had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. That's verses 17 and 18. What a coincidence that must have been. That when they all got together, whoever, I mean, now, they gathered together as a family, whatever, you know, I don't know. They, they settled down usually in tribes, but they gathered together, to gather the manna, they got together, and they meted it out an omer each, and it come out perfectly every time. That's just amazing, isn't it? How lucky could you be? Every day this happened. And guess what? Later on we're going to find out they started murmuring again. We live, and I remember hearing Mahan saying this years ago. We live in a day and age of so little power as far as actual seeing things, the workings of God. But you look here in this book and you'll see there's a reason why Christ said a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign because signs and wonders don't work signs and wonders don't give life signs and wonders don't convert Christ Jesus gives life and Christ Jesus converts. That's what he told Thomas when he said, you know, put your hand in my side now, I'm here. And Thomas fell to his knees and said, my Lord, my God. And he said, blessed are your eyes for they've seen and they believe. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's us. Right now. These people.
people had these miracles. They, they got up every morning, there was food outside. Exactly as much food as you're going to need for a day. And on the day before the Sabbath, you got twice as much because you weren't going to gather on the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath is a rest. But you're going to eat on the Sabbath. You aren't supposed to gather, but you're going to eat. Because the manna was to be consumed every day. Every day. And it was for all of the people. Because all need the manna. They were all hungry and the manna met everyone's need. And there are many types of people, but there's only one manna. There was an omer given for each individual. After the gathering, they divided it out. He that gathered much had, had none left over, and he that <laughs> gathered less had no lack. God provided exactly as much manna as was needed. There was always enough. And there is always enough. The manna was delivered there to be eaten. The manna was there for those who hungered. And it was delivered to the hungry. And there is always enough. The last part for the day anyway. The manna was pleasant to the taste. It tasted good. Verse 31. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was, and it was like coriander seed. White. And the taste of it was like wafers with honey. Sweet. Manna was sweet. The manna was like wafers made with honey. Manna tastes good. Numbers 11 and verse 8 put it this way. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills and beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. Whatever was done with the manna is still manna. Started out manna, it finished manna. You can grind it up, you can bake it, but you are to consume it. And it's still manna. It still tastes sweet. When you start with manna as the only ingredient, the result of whatever you do is still manna. But now the opposite is also true. If it doesn't taste like wafers made with honey, it's not manna. Yeah. And that's the question. Is it manna? Well, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Psalms 34 and verse 6, 7 and 8 says this. <laughs> The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Verse 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. The Lord is good. The Lord does provide. The Lord planned to provide, purposed to provide, and then he provided. The food provided for the child of God by God is good and it will taste good 
to the child of God. Because there is nothing like the taste of manna, the bread from heaven, for the child of God. Nothing. That manna, I'm going to stop, came down from heaven every day. Because we need it every day. And we are to gather it. They were to gather it and to eat it, to consume it, to take it in. Christ is our bread from heaven. And we are to feast upon him every day. We are to believe him every day. I like that. Where I talked about it last week. The gospel is the power of God. Unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. And that believing is in the present tense. And it's in the active. And it was in the present tense yesterday. And it's in the present tense today. I believed yesterday. I believe today. And I'm to believe tomorrow. And the next day. And the next day. As many days as the Lord has given me. I am to believe him and I am to learn of him and I am to try to take it in in me and in you if you believe him you are to take him in and it will make a difference <laughs> in you he has made a difference in you if you believe him but his manna that he sends is to be consumed every day because we need it and I want it I want it there are people who don't want the manna there are people who will take anything but the manna they'll take anything except the bread from heaven and I'm going to talk a little bit about that next week but I want the manna I want the truth of God as it is in the face of Jesus Christ and when I come to this place I don't want anything less just manna you can grind it up you can bake it in an oven as long as it's manna you can mix it with a little water and do something. I don't know. As long as it's manna. As long as it came down from heaven. And is fit food for the people of God. That's what I want. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father. Thank you. For this time and this place. Which we have set aside. To try to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, thank you most of all for your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who is our bread, who is our nourishment, who causes us to live in your sight. In his name we pray. Amen.